So the word that I want to talk about today is melancholy. And it's a word that is close to my heart. It's a word that I think about a lot. I think when I look at my writing, there is this dance of humor and sorrow or melancholy. I'm very interested in that dialectical relationship, maybe because I lived for so many years in Istanbul. And in a city like Istanbul, I think they're constantly mixed humor and melancholy in the sense that there is an element of humor in the saddest moments and there's some trace of sadness in the funniest moments. So it's a city that constantly mixes everything. As a writer, I do commute between languages and I have realized over the years that if my writing has more melancholy in it, more sorrow or longing, I find these things much easier to express in Turkish. But when it comes to humor, which is really important to me, and irony and satire, I find these things much, much easier to express in English. So it's a word that I do think about a lot. When we look at the trajectory of the word, the journey of the word, of course, it goes all the way back to ancient Greek language and uh, medical theories, Hippocrates, because when you unpack the word, it means, in a way, black bile. And it refers to these theory, ancient theory, about there being four major fluids in the human body. And if the balance is lost, then you're more prone to depression. In that regard, it is associated with sickness. But we need to bear in mind, this wasn't always the case. So, for instance, there are interesting references to the word melancholy uh, throughout Renaissance, for instance, in which melancholia is associated with creative genius, with creativity, with maybe inspiration, artistic inspiration. That's something I find very interesting. But more and more, as we approach the modern times, it, it acquires a much more negative meaning. Of course, Freud's very famous work on you know, murder, mourning and melancholia. But then later on, uh, there's a book that left a big impact on me by Julia Kristeva, The Black Sun, you know, all these metaphors. Uh, melancholy is in the English language is sometimes described as a black dog, you know, like um, like something that catches you unawares when you're going on about your life. You suddenly are caught by that black dog. Why do we associate it with these metaphors? I, I like to think about such things. But to be honest, in my opinion, melancholy doesn't have to be associated with sickness. And there is a trace of melancholy in life all the time. And we know this much better now that we're going through this tunnel of pandemic when there's so much uncertainty in the air. Ours is the age of anxiety, angst. There's an existential angst that we need to be aware of. It's also the age of uncertainty. In many ways, it is the age of anger, frustration, disappointment. There's so many negative emotions that every day, day in and day out, we have to deal with. And in my opinion, it is healthier to understand and embrace these emotions rather than acting as if they are, you know, they're not existing in our lives, rather than trying to sweep them under the carpet. As human beings, we are emotional creatures. And I think emotions have power. It pains me to see that oftentimes populist demagogues understand the power of emotions much better than their liberal democratic counterparts. They speak to people's emotions in a better way. We need to think more carefully about emotions and emotional intelligence. But more importantly, what I'm trying to say is there will be negative emotions in our lives. And I think they can provide us with some energy you know, in itself, anger, anxiety, melancholy, they're not necessarily bad. And in fact, I'm going to take a step further and I'm going to claim that if from time to time you do not find yourself overwhelmed with melancholy or anger or anxiety, maybe you're not following what's happening in the world, you know, here, there and everywhere. Because when we do follow it affects us. Of course it affects us. We're human beings. We respond. And so much is happening today in the world. 
The important thing, in my opinion, is not to suppress melancholy out of our lives, not to erase it, but to see it as a force and to try to turn it into something much more positive and much more constructive, both for ourselves as individuals, but also for our communities and our societies. All I can tell you is that in an age like this, it is okay not to be okay all the time. It is human to understand and embrace our melancholy as well as the joys and beauties of our lives. As always, it is really important how we use words, what kind of meanings we attach to them. You know, it is important that we do not stigmatize, we do not ostracize people because they're suffering from melancholy or depression and see it as a natural part of human existence, as a season that we go through and then it becomes lighter, less heavy. Please bear in mind, words can heal, words can hurt.